Welcome to round two in beautiful sunny San Diego at Snapdragon Stadium for the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Track Walk. And uh, boy, couldn't, couldn't welcome this weather anymore after the weeks we've had of rain here in San Diego. Honestly, we're up in the mountain areas, probably up to 15 inches. But today I'm going to have a special guest host with me. Josh Hill, we did a little TV time this week in San Diego to promote this race, and uh, glad to have you come along and give your insight of what you're going to be facing tonight. Yeah, this is awesome. The track looks great. I got the legend with me here to tell me about line selection, what we need to run for tires, and yeah, I guess what the good rhythms are going to be out here. Well, tell me this. <laughs> How close did we come to not have to have to have a substitute <laughs> fill in here today? Rumor had he had a little car trouble this morning on the way to the race. Yeah, when I'm out here in California, I've been borrowing my little brother's O2 Ranger, and I think the fuel pump or something went out about a mile from my house, and I had my little electric pit bike in the back because I was bringing it to get around the pits, and Jump, pulled that thing out, pinned it home, grabbed an Uber, and we made it. I didn't want to scare you. I didn't let you know. <laughs> he gets a text. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the car getting here, but pretty amazing story. So if anybody up in the Temecula area saw some guy that looked like Josh Hill riding an electric pit bike all the way down the street to his house, yeah, it was you. Huh? That was me. Oh, that's pretty amazing. So, well, let's talk about right here on the start, typical metal grace for the Supercross, but 320 foot. It's 321 feet for the first turn. That itself is a fairly long start. Anytime we get over the 300 length, that's a full length track. Do you like long starts or do you like the shorter ones? I, you know, I like this start because it looks like it's a nice, long, wide start. You know, and they're, when they're real, uh, real long and get real funneled in at the end, I, sometimes I feel like that creates more drama than you want in the first turn, but this one looks nice. Okay, well, you definitely like this one, and uh, it looks even from all the way across. Last week at our last race in Anaheim two weeks ago, we had that split start. Tell us about your feelings of split start, even though we'll just briefly talk about it. Well, the split start, I, I feel like the inside line was what was the preferred line, but then also on the outside, it kind of created a little bit of a, a buffer between the riders. So it felt like you were taking off with only 10 guys instead of, instead of 20. And then once you got to the turn, you had enough space to funnel in. So, you know, I, I, some people complained about it. I wasn't opposed to it. I think it's great when they try some new stuff. Well, it's talking about some new stuff here. We got some new stuff right underneath our feet. Yeah. <laughs> this dirt, you're a Pacific Northwest guy. We used You've spent plenty of time on the Southern California Supercross yeah. tracks being a factory rider like yourself. But coming down here, we feel this dirt right here, Dirt Works and Feld in particular, went through an enormous amount of effort to try to get this track in racing shape, which is so surprising to me. The fact that we were able to import over 400 truckloads of fresh dirt. They had a monster truck event here just last week, and it was so muddy. They had to do, it was almost impossible to have an event. The dirt was contaminated. They hauled it out of here, brought this dirt in literally from the Oceanside area, probably 10 miles from the old Carlsbad Raceway. So a lot of clay in this corner, in this dirt right here. And this track looks like it's going to be fantastic with this weather. So I don't, I don't, I think this is going to be one of our best tracks we see all year, to be honest. Yeah, this dirt looks a little bit more brown and dark than we're used to seeing. Yep. But I don't know if you notice this right here. This is something new. I don't know if I've ever seen an off-camber first turn. Well, it is. Yeah, I think right here, <laughs> you can get confused which way you're going right here, but I think you know we'll let you lead the way. So you want to be leading in this corner right here. So what, do you, what is your thoughts on this? Well, my thoughts are is it's, you know, it's a lot less off-camber towards the outside. The inside here is really steep. So I think that if you got control of the first turn, you're probably going to end up sweeping a little bit wide. And what that might do is create a little bit of a gap and a little bit of a hole for guys that get you know, cut off coming into the first turn to maybe sneak up this inside because the way this corner is angled, I think if you're carrying speed and you're up front, you're probably going to take more of a wide line. Yeah, can we see that, Shane, on the camera here? I mean, you have a much higher inside, and as Josh was talking about, complete off-camber right here. So this is, uh, this is going to be interesting. The rider is going to be checking this out as they come through the first turn. And speaking of that, we got a rider coming up behind us that you might know who he is, but you know what? Justin, Justin, get up here. Come up here and give your brother an excuse for that truck breaking down. What was, what was the deal there? Is he well, not paying enough rental car? No, that's all, that's all me. I just brought a beater down for him. I should have brought him something better. <laughs> yeah, you just about took out part of your competition tonight right here for the best Hill Brother finish. He was going to eliminate one of them right off the bat. So uh, Josh would have Josh would have missed, <laughs> he missed the chance to... Uh, to be able to race tonight, but uh, Justin, you have a, he has a lot of good feelings in San Diego. I think he's won here twice in the 250 class, 
and had a West Coast Championship uh, as part of that uh, run there. So, boy, you, you must like San Diego, huh? I like San Diego. I've always, for whatever reason it is, I've liked this town every time. It doesn't really matter the stadium either. It seemed like I did good Qualcomm, did good Petco, so hopefully I do good here. Well, good. Good luck tonight, man. Thank so, you. yeah, I like this town too. That's why I've never left. <laughs> Imagine that. So, yeah, long history here in this stadium, I tell you, in the, in the early days. Uh, the first race, 1980, won by my teammate Mike Bell. And then uh, the next two years, won by some guy that I know pretty well. But the, we had a big run from the El Cajon zone here. I think we won six of the first eight races here. So a lot of fun, a lot of fans from San Diego come out here. Motocross, a long-standing tradition in this town. So people remember the great Edison Dye who brought the motorcycles and Husqvarna's here and all the European riders. So pretty fun deal. So coming off that section right there, a little downside out of that first turn berm. What you thinking on the rhythm section there, Josh? Well, you know, if you triple in, it looks like it'll be doable, but then you hit, you know, kind of a steep tabletop here, and with it having three singles after it, you know, whatever you do, you're going to have to, you know, you could jump table over two, but you're going to have to single out. So, you know, maybe if that line in that turn gets kind of cut down and there's lower and lower lines, the fast line might be double, jump over the tabletop, triple. All right, well, might be a little safer too. Yep, hopefully your Mountain Motorsports uh, Monster Energy KTM's got all the horsepower you need. Might be able to quad one of these things. Hey, huh? Mitch Payton hooked that thing up. It's pretty good. All right, sounds good. So we got Chase Sexton looking over right here, checking it out. He's probably thinking of something fancy here too. Walking amongst walking amongst the Supercrest greats today. I feel pretty privileged here. So. Coming into this bowl corner right here, our first big uh, 180. What do you? What's your feelings? I mean, we see a lot of 180s. You know, they do go left and right. Uh, you know, but this here is a right-hander coming in here. Are you? Uh, do you have a preference, right-handed or left-handed? I I usually like uh, right-handed tracks, and this is a mainly right-handed track. Uh, and I think that's due to uh, you know I have a left foot injury where I don't have feeling in that foot. So okay. the less times that I have to take my that foot on and off the foot pegs and put it back on coming into obstacles, usually the better for me, the more comfortable I am. Well, that's, so. uh, that's pretty interesting. And, it, and there has been a real strong trend riding uh, a lot more feet on the pegs while seated. I want to preference that while seated through ruts and corners. <laughs> I mean, Eli Chase has been working on it too. These guys, you know, a, a great San Diego rider, Marty Tripes used to stand on the pegs a lot. You know, he was taught from a, a, a gentleman in Czechoslovakia about that, and Joel Robert were another riders who did it. But the modern guys are seated on the bikes, and they tend to stay seated. So these corners, either way, right hand, left hand, doesn't seem to really matter. And so as we work our way down this rhythm section right here, coming directly out of that, do you think you're going to pop a triple out of that, or do you think you're going to be able to do just a two and then try to get up over the high one here? Uh, that's a really big berm, and this triple doesn't look too terribly long. So I think that the fast line is going to be a triple. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll have to see what the rest of the rhythm section, it, you know, is in there. Another thing is, if a lot of people start tripling, this one might get broke down a little bit, so it might even be harder to go two and then three. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. So what Josh is saying there, you might have to go off rhythm if we start getting a lot of ruts here. So that's part of the problem when you're airborne 50, 60 feet and you got to come down, you could be three or four inches off and catch an edge of a rut and it could be catastrophic. We saw Malcolm Stewart go down at Anaheim late in the race with something similar to that happening. So again, if it needs to go off rhythm. And the other thing here, we see the second and the fourth jump right here where our Twisted T uh, staffer here is standing on top of it's probably another foot higher so the second and the fourth one are higher than the uh than the other uh jumps here so yeah. do you try to get over the top of the high one so you can stay low looking at this rhythm though there is uh basically every any line you do the way they have it spaced it looks like you're probably going to be hitting one of these high ones there's a high one down there there's a high one here so you know i think that i think triple triple and then uh, it looks like you might be able to jump over that tabletop and triple in the turn. Or if somebody's really feeling froggy, you might be able to jump the hole on off and double into the turn and catch the inside. All right, sounds good. Well, we got one of our KJSC riders right here. What's your name? Levi. Levi. Nice to meet you, Levi. Do you know who Josh Hill is? You do? All right. What bike are you riding? Oh, the number four. Is that what you're riding? The number four bike? All right. Well, we'll be watching for you tonight. Good luck. Thank good you luck. Okay. 
So over here to the left, Shane, let's cheat over here just a little bit because I want to give some more props to the Dirt Works guys. I don't think people realized how much of a mucky mess this is right here. I mean, last night I did a little teaser video from way up on the patio and they were pumping this out and you could hear the truck running the whole time. They were trying to get this muck out, but this is what's left over. They've hauled truckloads and truckloads of slop out of here, but they did a magnificent job on the track. And as we talked about, I mean, 5,600 cubic yards of fresh dirt brought in, but this mess over here, I'm, there was no way to build a super cross track using that. So. Yep, working down here and then, so Josh, you were talking about the fact that you just primarily will want to be doing, watching the track develop. If it gets more rutted, you might go off rhythm. Obviously, you'll have to get a feel for it. I mean, you, when you walk the track, do you kind of automatically line up some, uh, some jumps there and, and try to figure out if you can possibly do a quad or do you ever walk them off or how do you know what you can you think you can do you know you just kind of look at, at how the uh, the transitions are in between a lot of these things and, and kind of feel the, the base I mean right now it looks like they've put water on top of the track since uh, you know after they built the track they had it covered and it looks like they've put water on top of it even since then so that makes me think that it's not as soft as we think yep. or what we anticipated so I, with this section you know there may be a three a three and then, you know, you may want to just jump over this tabletop and trip one of the turn because you do have a good berm out there. But you might also be able to go three, three, and then jump this entire step on step off because that's not a very sharp, uh, scary single right there. Yep, I bet. Uh, scary for me, not for you, but it's uh, said uh, last week's or last race, first round winner, Jet Lawrence, walked by there. And uh, talking about slippery, you absolutely are right that they added water. They've been throwing water on top of this, and uh, they've had to put some water. And we mentioned, for those of us from Carlsbad and rode those days, we know how hard that dirt is. So this dirt has a lot of a you know has a lot of adobe in it. So. Did you have a good, good couple of weeks of practice? Yeah, it felt so weird. It felt like back in off season almost. Really? I bet. How does it feel, honestly, when you have that happen? When you end up, you're all ready for a bang, 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 three or four sequential races in a row, and then all of a sudden it's like, stop, we got a whole weekend off. Does it throw off your rhythm? It does a bit. Like, I mean, it does a little because it, it kind of feels like back in off season. So it's like uh, this morning I woke up, and the big thing I said is, like, it doesn't feel like I'm racing this weekend because I didn't race last weekend. So, uh, no, we're excited to be back. I mean, love race and uh, obviously I went pretty pretty good it was good to be back so it's almost like first round again <laughs> so, All right. so we'll good. see how it goes track looks pretty good definitely not going off the side so <laughs> <laughs> we were just looking at that if you go off the side you're going to be in trouble so yeah, sure. stay on the track no question so I don't think it's going to be too hard for you riding great everybody loves to watch your race out there so Thank good you. luck tonight and uh, see if you can make it two Thank in a row man good job Absolutely. all right it's all right, Jet Lawrence. I'm sure it's not going to be too hard for him. It's kind of one of those, he makes it look easy, guys, huh? Yeah, he makes everything look easy. He's doing stuff on his 250 out of the turns that 450 struggle on, so he's, uh, he's got something special figured out. Yeah, he certainly does, so real talent there. And uh, I always just marvel at what it must have been like to be his youth growing up, living in Europe practicing with the world's best riders on tracks like sand tracks over in Lommel and places like that. So he got to see a lot of good riders and obviously his brother Hunter is a fantastic rider too. So coming out of this corner, we talk about just their section here. Right away, almost for no question, you're gonna be doubling the first, I, tripling, I'm not sure, you're gonna get a triple out of that or you think you're gonna be popping? Yeah, I, you know, not to say it isn't possible, but the way this rhythm's yeah. lined up, even if you do get a triple, uh, you're probably just going to get a triple and a single again, so you're going to have the same amount of hops regardless. So right. probably double, triple, double will probably be the fastest line. Uh, you know, it, things may develop if the outside gets messed up. You might cut to the inside in that 90, get a roll, double, triple, and then single into the turn, or just roll, double, double, double. Might not actually be that terrible. Right, because there's seven obstacles here. We're on the middle one, so we got three on each side. So again, if you were to be able to get triple, 
you know, if you could do triple triple, you still got the single, but it does give you a, a, a good little shot on the inside for a pass if possible. Yeah. And we got a 180 coming up here, a really almost a flat 180, as you'll see. It's not too, uh, it's not too uh, banked. It's not a big 180 bowl corner. It's pretty flat, which I like. It gives some extra extra options, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm. When I see a flat turn like this in front of the triple, it makes me real happy that I'm on a 450. <laughs> exactly. You can just uh, not, not get lazy, but at least you have the luxury of having a little extra grunt. Huh? Uh, a 450 will jump this triple in first gear, so even if I come to a stop, I think I can still get over it. <laughs> okay, well, you heard it here, so we'll be watching, that's for sure tonight. So, faced with a basic triple, probably 62 to 64 feet, you know, just the usual specs on it. A little bit too slippery for us to be walking up the side, so we're gonna go around here, and I think Shane's gonna follow. If he, he's a wise man. So you can see there is some standing water in the, in the middle of the, of the jumps there. Wheels on the ground, you're gonna be uh, faced with dodging a little bit of that in the first couple of practices but they actually have had to put water on this track. As I mentioned, it came in pretty dry. This dirt came in here and uh, all 400 plus truckloads, it came in dry. And then uh, landing's pretty simple. And then what about this corner, Josh? What do you think? Not a full 180, pretty banked, and it kind of funnels out and gets you going kind of wide before you hit a little bit of a dragon's back over here, huh? Yeah, it's a full 180 degree uh, corner, but the berm is only about 120 degrees. So <laughs> we're gonna be probably sliding the rear end and trying to cut down off of that if I had to guess. Uh, you know, and the, with the way this dirt is, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of an inside rut develop too with, yeah, with the could, stickiness in it. Could very well, but, but you mentioned the stickiness. Yes, you can feel that adobe sticking to the bottom of your feet here. So really good, to me, really good dirt for Supercross. Yeah. So, so we got a pretty nice dragon back here. Um, it's big, but it's round. So we got a little bit of a run into it. That always helps, you know, I feel like when you uh, have a good run into a set of whoops or a dragon back. When the guys have more speed, they're not going to chew up the uh, the faces of this dragon back and get it cupped backwards as much. So this should be pretty good. Um, I think maybe the challenge on this will be coming into it, carrying enough speed, and then actually catching the downside of the next single perfectly to, to make your inside or whatever you're going to do in the next section. Excellent point, Josh. The fact, like, if you have a little more run at the dragon backs, they don't get rutted up as much. When you're coming right out of a corner, you're on the throttle, back tire, those Dunlop knobbies are tearing it up. and. Uh, it gets big ruts in it, but we don't want to see that. We want every the riders to be able to use the whole track so we have a better chance of passing, etc. So, Speaking of someone who used the whole track last week, this guy worked his tail off getting all the way up to second place. How are you? Doing good. Hunt Coop? Yeah, up, Brock? Had a nice run, baby, last week. Good, man. good you, job. Man. Good How luck. you feeling? Good? All right. Sounds great. What would you do in your off week? Just practice I, harder? I crashed in the heat pretty good and barely just rode around. Same old, same old. Well, warm. everybody uh, was very impressed with what you did and uh, appreciate it and uh, put on a good show tonight. I got put on the spot and I got you on the podium. So, all right, man. Have a good one. Yep, I, uh, I always try to play Switzerland. I feel guilty if I pick somebody over another one. But, man, Coop was impressive last <laughs> week. I, I'm, maybe you didn't get to see it all, but he came from, he came from back and was... When those tracks are tight like that, he is he's sneaky fast, isn't he? Yeah, you know, I just think any time that uh, he's fired up like this and people maybe yeah. tend to forget about him, he shows us, he shows up and shows us who he is. Yeah, that comment he made in the uh, press press uh, press conference at Anaheim, he was like, yeah, everybody's already wrote me off, you know, but uh, yeah. kind of a funny statistic, I don't funny, but interesting statistic to me. Um, Mike Bell was a Supercross champion way back in 1980. We talked about him winning the first Supercross here at, in, in San Diego. He went on to his championship that year, and then the next year in 81, he did not win a single race. And I guess Cooper last year was the first defending champion that raced the following year in the same class that did not also did not win a race. So he has a tendency to be every other year guy, and this is another, this is the other year, so we're expecting to see great results, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he looks he good. looks fired up. Yeah. He looks like he's got his bike better, and you know I think that so much goes into it to win in one of these championships. I mean, it's always been that way, but it maybe maybe even more you know now that it takes so much out of these guys and and how much they have to train that 
Maybe you got to hit the reset button every once in a while. Yeah, before we run through these whoops here, and they're, I think, 14 feet peak to peak, a really nice hard adobe. So before we run through all these, talk about that. Back in 2008, factory ride, you win <laughs> Minneapolis Supercross. You had a crazy run going. I think that year you were sixth, third, and then had, what, four seconds in a row? Was that the year? Or that was, was that two, 2010. 2008 okay, was my rookie year. Okay, I, got, gotcha. I got a win in three second places. Won a bunch of heat races, and that was uh, you know my inaugural inaugural year. Right. I did one year in the 250 West Championship and got third in that, and uh, just wanted to move up to the 450. I thought that I, that bike suited me better at the time, and yeah, uh, 2010, 2009 had a lot of injuries. 2010, um, actually, when we left San Diego in 2010, I was tied for the championship points lead with Ryan Dungey. With eventual champion Ryan Dungey, yeah. yeah. So that was the one you had a 10-6 third two 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 and then it, like at that point you had to be thinking i have got to get this win get the monkey off my back but also that was all kind of west coast based and as we moved east your results unfortunately kind of slipped a little bit so tell us kind of what brought that on in your opinion uh that was just you know we did a lot of our testing on that new bike that was a new generation yamaha Mm. in 2010 and i had the bike really dialed in on the west coast and uh when i went to the east coast uh you know my settings weren't feeling as comfortable and i ended up just kind of hitting the deck a few times and and uh you know broke some ribs had a you know a concussion and you know i kept trying to to fight through because it was stuff that was you know i was good to race but not good to perform at my best so i think okay. i finished that season out in sixth but okay. uh you know, well, it's something you, you live, live and, and learn. learn from. Absolutely. I remember doing the same thing even back in our days. You know, you set your bike up for a West Coast, and then uh, you get to some soft track, even in Seattle for us. Uh, and, and our suspension usually was too soft because you had a lot more force against the suspension than you do on hard pack. So, you know, you, you live and learn. So talking about suspension setting right here, I bet you guys been working a lot because everybody knows how important the whoops are. You guys work with Enzo suspension, right? Yeah, so that's good. You guys got your bikes dialed in here and you're ready to clip across the top of these? Or what, 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 what do you look at when you're as a rider? In my day, we had a lot smaller whoops, but I used to try to just look at the peaks. I tried to never look down because you can see you stand there and I stand here. I mean, there's a big difference in height between you know what we've got here in height this these are deep and if you drop in them you got a lot of trouble so what is it that you focus on with your eyes for one and then on your bike too I, I think just coming out of the turn or the obstacle in front of the whoops the main thing is just to try to get as much power to the ground as possible and then the second most important thing is is where you set your front wheel to start your whoop section some whoops have a great uh, starter whoop that just sets you perfectly on top of them some are a little tall and some are a little short and that really dictates how the whole rest of the whoop section goes. If you set your front wheel down right, set your rear down right, you can pretty much just skim across the top of these things like a straightaway. But if you get off balance and you, you start to skip side to side or you go a little go a little low in one of the whoops, you may miss the next one and then it's kind of like riding a buck and bronco. So your eyes, I know other athletes, gymnasts, they always want to spot their landing. A diver, I'm sure, spots the pool. That's the reason they put spray on top of the water so they can pick it up eat more easily visually when they're doing their twists and turns. So in Supercross, like other athletes, you spot your landing, but you're looking for your landing on your front wheel, right? That's it, yeah. The, I, as soon as I come out of the turn, I'm spotting my landing. And then, you know, by the time I'm, as soon as I take off from the first starter whoop and I know I'm setting it down where I want, my eyes immediately go towards, you know, towards the end of the whoop section. The further you can look ahead, like that's, you know, you don't want to look at the whoop right in front of you or else you know you're going to only you're going to be too focused and too tensed up worrying about that you got to look further down the course and be almost like 3 4 whoops ahead when where you're going perfect so into the 180 right here again berm's not quite as full as the other one but the Dunlop 180 with the catcher's mitt net which is always good safety thing into a nice finish line jump here and I don't even know if I want to attempt to slide up I, there I think we might want to I go think to the right we want to go one. around the right hand side <laughs> so Shane you're going to join us over here and we'll come around the right hand side of this but Justin, you want to get up on there, right? I already did it. Okay. He's Justin a little more agile than me, yeah, a little less he injuries. He's got less injuries, younger. That's <laughs> what it is. So traditional finish line here. Team manager's tower is right there, keeping an eye on all their top riders. The AMA officials sitting in that tower there. And we're going to work our way up here. There we go.
We've got the gathering of the minds over here. We got Weege, it looks like Ryan Villapoto, Steve Mathis from Pulp, geez, Brock Tickle. Man, oh man. Uh oh. Looks like RV. RV's been riding or was that? No. Oh, go kart. Let's see that injury, man. Let's see that. Oh my goodness. Go kart. Yamaha had their big press launch, I think, at K1. You hosted it, right? I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Photos walking off. Okay. Something went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Did you see Doc Bogner come out with I the Astros Mobile the Medical Unit? Yeah. yeah, you got something going there, man. <laughs> but you sacked up and you went back out there. Oh, I went back out for the main. Yeah. You did. You did. Okay. Tough well, as nails. Yeah, absolutely. Tough, as, <laughs> tough as nails and <laughs> almost as done. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Exactly. We'll see you there. I'm going to meet up with Ryan a little bit later. We're going to. Rumor has it we might do a little podcast next week, so it should be fun. It's always got always a good time. All right, through the simple double right here. So coming off this, Josh, pretty pretty basic. This is about as basic as a section of a track you'll ever find at a pro at a Monster Energy AMA Supercross race ever. Just finish line jump, boom, double, another complete 180. This Rocky Mountain ATV MC right here. This 180 is very, very, uh, very steep. So, yeah, a little rubbing and ra ramming going on. Yeah, maybe. you know these easy sections sometimes are what, where people let their guard down and try to push through, and occasionally that, that, those are the sections that'll bite you. So, this, uh, yeah, this berm's nice and big. Yeah. It looks like it's uh, the end of the berm is a little bit further in than the uh, than the takeoff of the jump. Yeah, look at so the guys look, may yeah, be kind of this beaten. little yeah this little pocket yeah I, i'm on the edge of the berm and there's still another i don't know three feet four feet of uh width of the track there for the for the jump so well the, the track is sort of heading that direction you're going to come across the start and and do a 180 there like flat turn across the start yep so you know maybe they're just trying to change the direction to to flow that way well, let's go check out what we're talking about because, again, this is three jumps in a row coming out of 180. I don't think you're going to be able to get all three of these, but... Uh, I, th I think we will. You do? Okay. Yeah, I believe, uh, you I believe we're right. going to get all you're three. Right. It looks longer. It, it may be a little bit tough on the 250s, but as, as long as that turn stays fairly hard, I think we'll get three. Okay, we'll get all three of them. So you were talking about that. Whoa! <laughs> Good save. There was a save. Look at, the, look at the skid mark, man. There you go, right there. Okay, come on. Oh, you have better bike that shoes. That's that Carl's bad stuff. Carl's bad. I'm telling you. That's it. So this is a unique section here, and I tell you, I was out here earlier, and I was out here yesterday, and I was walking around the track with the Dirtworks guys, and there was a lot of discussion between the officials and the Dirtworks guys about this corner in particular. You come out onto the starting line, as we work our way through here. You see, this is a very basic old school if there was ever an old school we used to use hay bales back in the 70s but this right here is going to be our inside corner marker tapered away so the foot pegs don't drag you got a rear brake there you got to make sure you don't hit but they were talking about where exactly to keep this sex this move it too close to the start a lot of maintenance damage in the damage in the area coming off the gate too close out here and eh, changes the whole dynamics of the layout of the track so this another is going to be that, an interesting little fun corner, but basic, but maybe some passing. Yeah, the, another thing that you might take into consideration is where are they going to put the mechanics where you can spot them? Because if you're coming around a flat turn like this, and I don't know if they plan on putting the mechanics here on the exit, your eyes are going to be looking over here. So that might be another uh, interesting factor in tonight's track. <laughs> you're not going to be able to ever read the, uh, read the pit board there. So. Yeah. Yeah, so. Heading into this uh, section here, another one, but you're going to have a lot of speed. So. Here's one right here that, again, doesn't look like a whole lot of triple, but it's going to be a triple, no question about it. And the landing, when you land off that triple, you don't have a very long braking zone. So it's another section for some big rubbing. Now, this is a really wide, wide 180 here. It's kind of like two apexes in the, in the corner there. You see Colt Nichols looking on. Another one had a great ride last week. I think uh, having a top six I think it's six was in at Anaheim so. two weeks ago so yeah. but yeah great great run that was uh had a, had a good run I think a lot of people didn't have him maybe finishing quite that high but he certainly showed how he knows how to ride a 450 in his uh debut race huh yeah so, great you know, job, another so. thing I've noticed about him is he's yeah. been riding a lot of the open to the public tracks you know those guys those tracks will get 
30 bikes on him in a day and they get really beat up and really rough and you know maybe he had uh, something a little special for that rough conditions that uh, some of the guys that were strictly riding test tracks didn't have. Let me see if I can get him down here before we close this out because this you remember this is where we came and started the track right here but let's see if I can get Colt down here in a second though. So yeah you, this corner right here you think some passing going on whatever you, you know dive inside of the guys. It was pretty funny last week where we were doing uh, we did a uh, a run with the TV stations, a couple of us, and the, and the newscaster was asking your brother Justin about, you know, con close contact sport. He was definitely a contact sport. He said it's but not much different than driving on the LA freeways. So that was pretty funny from a kid from the Pacific Northwest knows uh, knows that how, how aggressive you have to be in Supercross and on the freeways. So let me see if I can grab Colt here. So Colt, would you mind giving us a little sound bite from last week, or uh, why don't you gonna come down? Why don't you come down there? Just go so. Colt Nichols, rookie start last week, right? Yes, sir. And uh, so we'll have to we share the mic here on my. So Fair enough. that was your first 450 race. Yeah. Did a lot of testing for Honda. They brought you in because you're experienced and all that. But man, what a what a race in Anaheim. Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah, it was good, man. I uh, didn't. I had no idea what to expect uh, from, from Anaheim. One, I haven't raced in a really long time. So just to catch a gate drop was good. And I was up there, you know, kind of mixing up with those guys, and that was pretty fun. And um, no, I, I was pumped, man. To people would have told me before if I would have ended in sixth place I'd be pretty excited so uh, it was a good first race we got that one out of the way and now we can kind of start building and, and really seeing where we're at but uh, that was a really good first race I was pumped. well you heard it right here so we're expecting another top finish from you tonight another good start you've always been known for good starts and yep. that 450 Honda you got it up front in the corner there so that makes a big difference huh yes it does that's what we're focusing on is just trying to get out front and give ourselves a shot at least you know uh, that's been my biggest focus uh, going into these races so if we can do that again put ourselves in a good spot then we'll, we'll be all right and the track when you what's your thoughts uh it's definitely like a little bit tighter to me it looks like it's it's pretty um low like it looks pretty um i don't know everything's not quite as peaky and tall as, as i think we're used to seeing so um i don't know if that's just from the rain kind of sinking everything down a little bit but overall i think it looks like a good track the dirt looks tacky and it looks fun it's a little tight but it's gonna be a good track oh very good so again josh Thank you so much for helping us uh, host this Dunlop Motorcycle Tires track walk and hope you enjoyed it. We'll be uh, back next week in Anaheim for the Anaheim 2 round. And again, good luck tonight. Thank and you. And we'll see you, uh, everybody next week.